Thank you very much for this opportunity. I see that I've made a major mistake that I was never in, uh, before in Wales. Uh, I've lived for one year in Scotland, and mm -hmm. numerous times I was in the United Kingdom, but I never made it to this part of the world, which is one of the nicer parts of the world. And uh, if I see also a former colleague of mine uh, in the Europe here, and uh, the European Parliament is indeed a major player. Look, uh, because I've studied constitutional law in 69-70 in Edinburgh, where I wrote a piece about uh, the relationship of national and, and European law, which is at the moment a very uh, new issue for some at that time. And I was always proud in a country which was a motherland of democracy. Is. And still in my living room is a picture, a painting, which I bought at that time of the House of Commons. And I said always, that is the powerful mother of parliaments. And in the Brexit time, I learned that the European Parliament has more power than the House of Commons. <laughs> they had to fight in extra votes to get rights in that question. All rights is in the treaty in the European Constitution, so to say. The European Parliament has both on the withdrawal agreement and the final agreement the, la uh, the last say. If we say no, it's no. Now, the Commission, all member countries together, cannot overthrow the position of the European Parliament in these questions. And uh, I think this should be taken into account. And we have a Brexit steering group with three chairpers, one of them I am, we take part in the negotiations of the Council for setting up the negotiation guidelines. So I am one of the drafters of these guidelines. And uh, I have learned in that situation also, and that is, very, I think, quite important information. I am since 38 years in the European Parliament. I have never seen a situation that Council, Commission, and Parliament are so close together. Mm -hmm. The guidelines we drafted were decided in the European, Parliament, uh, uh, European Council by the uh, uh, heads of states and government in two minutes. Mm -hmm. Normally, they need f three sessions for such a thing. Therefore, it should be very clear that in this question of Brexit, the member countries, despite some differences we have always in life, is so close together and that it makes sense not to look into the situation whether you can make with the Poles and others a different deal. At the end, the deal must be a joint one. Therefore, it is not worthwhile to play it that way. And with the withdrawal agreement, we have to say if this withdrawal agreement fails, then there is no treaty at all afterwards. Then on the 29th of March 2019, it will be hard Brexit. No common relationship anymore, with the exception of WTO rules. And there's after sometimes the feeling that this is not seen. There are no winners because of Brexit. Uh, what we do at the moment is about minimi minimizing the damages to both sides. There's nobody in the EU who wishes to punish the UK. But at the same time, it is the United Kingdom which has decided to leave. We in the EU must protect our citizens and our interests and our partners. What does it mean in practice? That a country outside the EU cannot have the same privileges as a country in the EU. The key sentence of the guidelines of the Council is this. A country which leaves the European Union cannot have similar advantages to, compared to a country which stays in the European Union and fulfills the obligations. This is the key sentence of all negotiation <laughs> guidelines and techniques. This has what means obligations. Obligations means for membership in the internal market, the four freedoms and the financial obligations. 
The four freedoms are essential. They are part of primary law of the European Union. We cannot change it, and we cannot compromise on that. And obligation means every time when you have an internal market, to have to help give aid, pay money to regions which are the poorer regions of the European Union, or of that internal market. The British government does it. And therefore, it's also the case that Wales is a net winner of membership in the European Union. I think every year they get 245 million pounds extra more. Despite the United Kingdom is a net payer, you know, Wales is a net winner in this uh, question. And uh, the internal market cannot work if it is not a win-win situation. I have it also sometimes to explain to Germans when they say we pay too much. This debate you have everywhere. But when you have an internal market with all that conditions of such an internal market, you have the weaker ones, otherwise they will not understand it as a win-win situation. And therefore, you cannot do the way that it's overall we are net winner in trade, what we should do then pay money, this will not work. And if we make an agreement on the internal market membership of the United Kingdom without fulfilling these two extra obligations, the internal market will lose its integrity. Sometimes I hear in London, no, at the end of the day, BMW will go to Mrs. Merkel and say, and then the Germans will intervene. They will not. They will stick with the solidarity of the European Union. And BMW has the same opinion. The German companies say, we do not like Brexit, as all of us do not like it, but the integrity of the internal market is more important for us than anything else. That there should be no hope that Germany will, because of this industry and export interest, will fall out of the solidarity of the European Union in these questions. I had some from Downing Street in my office on Monday, and I had a feeling that again, after we thought we had made good progress in the negotiation for the withdrawal agreement, they came up with some extra proposals. How can you be between something and have the advantages? It will not work. They try it now the third time in the time of the negotiation. It will not happen. And we can have also uh, not uh, better relations than our partners in the European Economic Area and Switzerland. Britain has decided, as it looks at the moment, no conditions for customs union, no conditions of internal market to accept. When you see that even the Swiss fulfill free movement of labor, despite the problems we have with the issue in the country, that the Swiss have decided by referendum that the Swiss will never give money away, have decided by referendum to give their contributions for the cohesion policy of the European Union. These countries tell us when you will give Britain a better deal than we have, then you will have a problem. And so we are in these lines of law, obligations, and of the position of our partners. And this you have to take into account, and there cannot special advantages. What we can do is uh, to find then possibilities in other parts. They come back to that. The UK government red lines force upon us a set of solutions. In this case, a simple free trade agreement. The UK, the UK must therefore make a choice. Is trade with the rest of the world more important than being part of the customs union? The EU is still the UK's most important trade partner. 44% of British trade goes to the continent. Only 7% of the EU trade goes to the United Kingdom. The, um, I hear the argument that from the UK side that all trade deals are bespoke, yes, but all trade deals exist in a legal framework. Canada does not want to join the European Union, therefore this is not part of customs union and is not part of the single market. Neither is South Korea, Japan, with whom we will make a free trade agreement in six weeks' time. It will be ready. Singapore and soon Australia, who all have to will or will have trade agreements with us. 
What Prime Minister May says when she refers to bespoke is having privileges of the single market and the customs union, but without the obligation that come with it. This is impossible. The UK government's position of being outside the customs union and being outside of the single market means a Canadian style of free trade agreement. And we have to know, perhaps there are some possibilities we have to negotiate, that all these free trade agreements have no content of solutions for financial services. That would be totally new if we would do that. And it makes it even more difficult to find an appropriate place for the city in the European Union. Next steps will be a withdrawal agreement followed by a 21 month transition, which will give both sides time to negotiate its future relationship. The withdrawal agreement will be relatively detailed, and the proposal of the European Union is on the table. Uh, there is more or less an agreement, both on the questions of citizen rights, there are some minor things to do, uh, but it went much better than I thought in the beginning, and I thought it would be a most difficult problem, but there's a solution on the financial obligations. But the Irish question is not yet solved. And I will tell you that the Irish question will be very high on the agenda in the European Parliament. I do not see at the moment in the European Parliament any majority without a proper solution for the Irish question in the withdrawal agreement, not afterwards, in the withdrawal agreement. Always to try to delay it for the future, future relationship will not work. And uh, I think uh, Britain has agreed in December that the standards should be set up in full alignment between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. That would mean that for Northern Ireland, if I read it as a simple germ, we cannot think complicated, that the European standards has to, in trade matters, accept by Northern Ireland. That's the question of uh, standards in consumer rights, uh, uh, food safety, and such things. But here we will have a problem. Brexit means, in the opinion of the Brexiteers, that, Europe, uh, that the United uh, Kingdom has a full sovereign right to make its own legislation in all that standards. But that would mean that we will diverge more and more. The European Union has in a part made a lot of negotiations. And always the difference was very big and then we came closer together. For the first time we have a situation that our standards are completely the same, but it will diverge. How to deal with that technically when it comes to border controls? And I know I visited both Northern Ireland and uh, the Republic and the, and the border. And I still see the sun, still the, the signs of the past controls. Family living on different sides of this border. The cows on one side and uh, what the meat production is on the other side. I don't know the English word for molkerei. And, uh, and here we have very practical problems. Very practical problems. Now we said now, oh, we will, we will use, uh, solve it with technical problems, which is technical solution, which are not invented until now. When it's said, uh, is, uh, it is uh, a problem that, uh, we say that in use this word, uh, uh, that it uh, should be done to, 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 to accept the standards of both sides, then you can do that also mutual recognition. Not just on that border, then you have to do it on all the borders. And we will not accept mutual recognition overall, as we do not do in any trade agreement. In trade agreements, you have agreements of 
no customs, no tariff barriers, if there's a certain equality of standards in that part. And for example, it's an emotional thing in, Germany, in, in, in Europe, hormone beef. If you make your own trade agreement with the United States and import hormone beef, then such an open border would mean that the Americans via this open border will send hormone beef to the European market. See some Germans here, I think the outcry in German citizens would be terrible. I believe it's wrong. I always eat hormone beef in the United States and believe it tastes wonderful. Uh, but it's not the feeling of the majority of my, my citizens. And uh, the chloride chicken. Uh, but you see in these simple examples how difficult this situation is. The proposal of the European Union is in uh, seeing the word full alignment that there should be border controls in the Irish Sea. But the DOP in government, the opinion of uh, the majority in, in, in Northern Ireland and the sovereign feeling of the United Kingdom, I have some understanding that this will not work. But we wait now for a new proposal how it should work and hope there's enough fantasy for that in the United Kingdom uh, government. If this will be not solved until October, November this year, then there will be no transition period, which we need to have more time for the negotiations about the future relationship, and there will be no withdrawal agreement, and there will be no future relationship with the exception of WTO, and it would be just a disaster. I would not like to have this result because of the economic and political solutions. Let's think about it, whether it works in the right way. Not make discussions that in November, December, in London, in the House of Commons, happens a revolution, there will be another referendum. All of us would like to, uh, to have it. But uh, I think this has not high expectations. So we have to see, Brexit will come on the 29th of March next year. And when we get a, this withdrawal agreement, we should negotiate a free trade agreement where we have so co much cooperation as possible to keep the damage low. But Margaret, uh, I always compare Margaret Thatcher with Theresa May, this is one of my mistakes, uh, that uh, uh, Theresa May has said in March, for the first time, really uh, explaining to its own citizen, one point. The more the standards between the European Union and United Kingdom will diverge, the less market access for the European, uh, United Kingdom to the European market. It's nearly literally her sentence. And this will be the measurement for these negotiations, not something in between. And here we have to see whether we can achieve something like CETA. And if we have an agreement that certain standards are kept, uh, then it can be go even further, because at the moment we have the same standards. But that would mean that the House of Commons will not use the sovereign rights in this question to change the standards. And then we have to talk to financial services. I said before that the financial services are not part of normal free trade agreements. But let's see, because of the interference of the City of London, we have to talk about that. But we will not follow the line of mutual recognition that is proposed. I give you a simple answer, not as a financial technician, but someone who was a victim of the financial crisis which came after 2008. We have made stronger and stronger rules on the financial services in order to, that such a thing like 2008, which brought all, all our countries, including your own country, at the verge of disaster. And we had to save countries like Ireland and others successfully. Ireland was 2009 bankrupt because of the failures of banks and the bubble games. No Ireland has 5% growth rate per year. 
higher than yours and ours. Europe works. And the European Union had in the last year a higher growth rate than the United States of America. The European Union has half so much trouble and debt in comparison to the GNP as the United States of America. The European Union is an economic success story. It's an economic success story. And uh, therefore, we will not allow that the financial sector will have again the same influence that it can create a situation that nearly states break down. Therefore, this whole situation about rules, uh, banking in for the banking sector, for the financial services sector. And if now, the United Kingdom, including what we have to finalize, uh, still a lot of problems with the banking union. And uh, mutual recognition would mean that Britain will go down with the standards for the, for the city back to the more profitable standards for its service, like Trump does it in the Wall Street, then it would be, first of all, stupid for us because our own financial services in the continent has problems with competition. And secondly, we come in the same mess as 2008 on a certain occasion that we will not allow. And therefore, this will not work. The city can only access to the European Union if it fulfills the standards, the legal standards of the European Union. And it means also what has to do with uh, uh, certain things we have to do with our currency. The euro is the currency of the European Union, not a currency, as we had to say until you were a member. Uh, it means that in 19 out of 27 countries are already members of the euro, and some others will follow. Then things which have to do with the euro will have to be done within the European Union. The old questions of passporting and so on, I will just name an example, will happen in the European Union. If not certain problems will be solved, this, I think, has to be clean, seen very clearly in that context. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that we, despite these problems, will agree on such a successful free trade agreement, but we have also to solve other problems. Internal security. I think both of us have an interest that we have a close cooperation in fighting terrorism and organized crime. But you will not be any more member of Eurogist or Europol, and also not part of governing this. But we have to find a way, how can we keep the cooperation in the common interest, what also the British government wants to do, in a proper way, that we have the cooperation, the exchange of news also what intelligence service has to deliver in order to fight terrorism in a proper way. But this will become difficult within the institution because Britain will be from the 29th of March not anymore in any institution of the European Union. Can have an observer status, but they will never have a vote. But the common interest, the common interest is there. The same thing is with external security. Britain is here an important country. And I must say that I really welcomed the American, French, and British cooperation in the Syrian question. We are aware of this importance. But we have set up now in December the Defense Union using the Treaty of Lisbon with a permanent structured cooperation. Britain has always stopped us to do so to fulfill this obligation of the treaty. Now it's that. 23rd countries agreed to that. Look, the member states of the European Union, including the United Kingdom, spent per year 230 billion euros for defense. That is nearly three times so much as Russia does. The member states of the European Union have 
more soldiers than the United States. The result is ridiculous, despite British strength, because we have not a proper cooperation. We have set up now a headquarter for common planning, complementary to NATO, to make it clear, which Britain has stopped us until now. It makes things easier to get synergy effects. Do we need when we have to go to Mali to, to talk nine months about it? Who will get? Who will do the do the headquarter? And more important is the question of research, development, and procurement. Who is the money? not properly used. And here we have to think about it, because Britain will not be part of the governance of this defense union, or Britain can take part in missions where they want to take part, or in certain projects of procurement. And here we have to find in an extra agreement a way how that can be done. And now, questions like research. We have this Horizon 2020 approach, this close cooperation of research institutions. Britain has a great science level. One fourth of the money of the European Union, this research matter for, higher, for this cooperation, is given to the United Kingdom. That will be finished. And many institutions, research institutions in the European Union, at the moment look for different partners than the United Kingdom, because they are not sure how will the future look. I had a research community of the United Kingdom in my office two months ago or three months ago. They are really concerned. Britain has this high level in research, but not anymore the critical mass for world standards in all the issues, in some for sure, but not in all issues. They need it so much as we need it. And here we have to find an agreement, like with Norway, like with Israel. Israel is part of this, because the British, uh, the Israeli research community is now world class but also has not a critical mass. They finance, Israel finances its European Federal research policy. Britain is invited to do so, they want to do so, but not, they get not the same money. They can't contribute for the projects where they participate, but it's not this extra money. Or Erasmus, should we stop the exchange of students? What does it mean when you go out of the uh, of, uh, of uh, European Union? Will have your students to pay the full charge when they go to a European university, or the other way around? Or it makes it sense, partly because of the same reasons as in a research question, that we find an agreement and have an extra agreement on this question. Therefore, the European Parliament proposes, because I have already mentioned uh, four or five agreements now, this is not official policy of the Union until now, but I propose it to the Council in the March session, that we should come to an association agreement as a roof for the whole relationship between the European Union and the United Kingdom where we can combine this, where we have uh, certain joint political uh, positions, that there is a need in that, that the United Kingdom government and the EU Commission meets every year or what, what is ever in order to have a transformation possibilities of closer relationships. And uh, I think we need, if it's only the free trade agreement, in order to develop our close relationship or not to go further away from each other, a political umbrella on top of that. I think we should think about that if we can come in this technical question to a solution. And therefore, I think that this is an important question. But we have to see also this European Union will go forward. We have this defense union. 
We will have now an own asylum policy rules in the course of this year. It was migration what had in Wales 67% of the Welsh voters were against more immigration in the referendum. But you could mean only the Polish migrants because the European Union stepped the Syrian migrants at Calais. No, we have not to do that anymore. The question was not the Syrian migrants, where my country took one, more than one million. But we had already a policy now that we had in 2017, 93% less migrants from the Middle East in 2015 because of common European policy. We will set up now outside border controls, which were rejected by the member states for many, many years. We made it in the Constitutional Convention for 20 years, this proposal. But Germany, France, Britain, everyone said no. It's too much sovereignty for Brussels. Now we do it because it's needed, because the member states alone cannot do it anymore alone in this world. And here are the other examples. And therefore, the European Union will grow despite all the problems we face. And I'm sure if you have a better and stable and economic and monetary union, we have better in defense policy, and we are better to show to our people that jointly is it better to stay against Trump's trade proposals. No, what your colleague, my colleague said, that Trump will come in May also with the, these tariffs, sanctions against the European Union against England, they had done it already alone with you, Bombardier, you remember this case. There's no special relationship. So he just does it. Then it's better we do it together to answer him. In most of the questions, from migration to terror, to trade, to internal, external security, or climate change, you and us, I mean Germany, are too small to deal with that alone. When we see that in Syria, we are not even on the table, but we pay for it. The Russians have made an agreement with Assad that his companies will rebuild Syria. But we make conferences, give our conferences to pay money for that. So he will rebuild with European money. This will not happen anymore in the future when we become stronger. But neither Britain nor Germany can make a difference in that. And if you go to the Silk Road and the Chinese ambitions, then I must say what John Dionkung has said as he was still Prime Minister of Luxembourg. He said, I know that there are bigger and smaller countries in Europe, but if you look from Moscow, from Washington or Beijing, all European countries are small but some of us have not understood it yet. Thank you.